Hey, beautiful souls, Merv here, and I help you live a healthier, happier with hypnosis. And I'm collaborating today with my good friend here and colleague, Rebecca. Hello. Hi, Merv. Happy to be back. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited about this conversation today. Yes, yes, me too. So today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics and Rebecca's as well, is we're going to go ahead and collaborate with talking about nutrition, weight loss, and mindset yay right? yes you can't yes. do it without the mindset <laughs> absolutely you can't do it without the mindset and 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 i use this quote a lot it's it goes something like this and i'm sure rebecca you've heard it and 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 the, the viewers have heard it is um the way you do one thing is the way you do everything or how you do one thing is how you do everything and we're gonna definitely get back into talking um about nutrition weight loss and mindset and Rebecca, you want to just introduce yourself real quick? Yeah. Hi, guys. Rebecca here from Vibe Mentor, uh, helping you raise your vibration so you can live your best life. So pretty much everything I talk about is is obviously raising your vibration is going to allow you to create a life that you love and reach your highest potential. And we were just talking about what percentage of that is mindset, and it really is 100%. So without the right mindset, we're not going to be able to accomplish any of the goals that we set in life, whether it's health and wellness, uh, abundance, a fit body, um, any of the external uh, desires that we tend to want have to come from the right place inside. So I love talking all, th all things nutrition and so really excited to, to dig into how they all connect because you, you can't try to achieve one without the other. And so the holistic approach is necessary. Yes, yes, I love that, absolutely. And, and Rebecca and I are gonna share our backgrounds, our actually um, history and and our stories about nutrition and how it actually impacted us and helped our lives to becoming, you know, the coaches that we are, whether we're, we're health coaches, mindset coaches, even, um, you know, intuitive coaches. Um, so nutrition to me, and I'm sure Rebecca can relate, is very, very important with starting anything throughout your day into thinking, into energy, into mindset work, into a movement of every day. So I'd love if you started this time, Rebecca, on explaining yourself or introducing how you got, you know, so much into nutrition or how nutrition affected you mindset wise, um, weight loss wise, what, whatever, whatever you, you were able to get impacted from nutrition in general, you know, have sure. due to the fact yeah. that you were in corporate before and going from corporate to where you are now as a coach and how it's affected you or impacted your life your life moving forward even with the clients that you work with yeah yeah absolutely so obviously it's intertwined um, throughout daily life and it's it's interesting how there's so many different uh, milestones in life that i could refer to so i'll just kind of go back to the beginning but um had a, a pretty troubling childhood obviously my parents did the best that they could but they were not well equipped and so there was a lot of um, lessons that i had to learn through life or to teach myself and one of them was nutrition um in fact that was one of the earliest ones and my my mom <laughs> not much of a chef i love you mom if you see this this is no no judgment here but you know she did the best with what she was given when she was a child and a lot of our dinners consisted of a box of noodles a can of soup and some kind of ground meat and you know i was asked to help cook and um, sometimes our vegetables were um, overcooked to the point that they were slimy. You know, the Brussels sprouts were like balls of snot. I mean, it was it was not fun. <laughs> and so I really, I really struggled with food growing up. Um, you know, and then my father, on the other hand, he had this rule that you had to eat everything that's on your plate. And so one, we're dealing with unhealthy processed foods not a whole lot of nutrition and then two not being able to listen to your body and and the portion sizes were not within my control and and so there there was a time where um, I really noticed this uh, discordant relationship with food where you know I would um, sort of dread dinner not really want to sit down and eat um, we learned to hide our food so that you know we didn't have to eat all the food that we were you know too full to eat 
Um, and then even when I would want to eat, say, an orange, you know, in, in having a snack, I would want to have two or three oranges, which I'm finding now is natural because we're so deprived from the vitamins and minerals we actually need that we want to, you know, gorge on something healthy. And then there was guilt and shame around that. You know, you're you're gaining too much weight. You're getting too big. You shouldn't eat sugar. You shouldn't have so many fruits. You're only supposed to have one. You know, all these shoulds and these rules. And there was no room to listen, mm -hmm. listen to the body and, and listen to the needs and honor the needs. Um, and then later in life, as I got a little bit older, uh, my first job, I was really excited at 14 to get a job. And, you know, the only place that would hire a 14 year old with a, a work permit was McDonald's. So I, I ended up in, you know, the belly of the beast, if you will. <laughs> And of course they, they gave you free lunch. And that was really the McDonald's moment was probably the, the first eye opening or, or a moment of consciousness where I ate that food and I instantly felt anxiety, wow. depression. I just felt yuck come over me. And so I really started to notice what I put in my body makes me feel either good or bad, that there's an impact. And that was about 14 years old where I really started to become aware of what I'm going to choose to put in my body. And it's been a journey ever since. I, I've probably tried every diet out there. Um, I even had a time of, of anorexia and not eating at all. And that, you know, it's very interesting how uh, our food habits are directly connected to our emotional environment and our external environment and how I tried to control what I couldn't control around me through my food or my lack of food. Um, and so many, many different points, like I said, throughout life where you learn and you grow and you overcome and finally coming to a place where there's a healthy relationship with food and a healthy relationship with the body and and how when we struggle in our lives, often when we can become disconnected from our bodies. We don't want to feel the pain and we want to numb out. And so we, we literally detach from our bodies and we stop listening. And so to heal all of that, to experience all of that, to take little bits and pieces of it, to say this works for me and this doesn't, and this is what's right for me because we're all unique and different, and then to to heal it and to come back to the body and thank the body for all of the crap that we've put it through. And it's tremendous, beautiful ability to heal and to regenerate and to become completely new within seven years. And then to to form a relationship with your body. I'm, I'm covered in, in goosebumps as I say this, because yes, I'm talking about you. Um, <laughs> that that there's it's fun to love on it now, you know, to 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 feel so good when you have a healthy salad or a green juice and just to to watch um, the the vibration and the vibrancy just come alive and, and kind of ooze out of you when you take care of yourself. So long story short, there's there's much experience there, but I'm happy to finally have come full circle to a healthy place. So I'd love to hear your story. Uh, not yeah, I love, that. That. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much, uh, Rebecca, for sharing. Oh my God. It's so interesting that we all kind of come from a similar background or maybe it's the generation that we lived in. I'm not sure be before internet exploded, you know, with like all the TikToks and Instagram and, and Facebook and healthy foods and eating. But um, I love the fact that, yes, you, we, we do share um, the same background. However, however, my mom was actually a good cook <laughs> and she did cook a lot of delicious food, but um. My background is Middle Eastern, so our food is very rich in, you know, a lot of flavors and oils and salts and sodium and and obviously not to mention the desserts, the sweets that are just filled with so much sugar and and the problem with with us, I guess, growing up is or myself, is um, we were eating very late at a very late time. Like dinner would be probably for us like 9 p.m. sometimes. Wow. 10. Um, which is which is really late or um we'll have it like maybe 8 p.m so dinner wasn't you know like five six seven it was it was obviously you know later than that and the fact that it was um filled with carbs and sodiums and and saltiness more than the actual like you know the veggies or the protein um and and then just growing up with a lot of like um uh different flavors and different foods and just knowing how to incorporate it into your your daily daily habits and the portions not to mention the portions 
because we would like literally eat a plate and a two and a three, mm -hmm. right? And and I grew up with a military like dad where, you know, like you said, your dad had to make you finish your, your plate. So um, everything had to be, you know, finished on the plate because we lived in a, in a world where, you know, there are poor people that can't afford to eat food. Yeah. So we're always reminded that, wow, appreciate the food on your plate, eat all of it, even if you're full, because it's not supposed to go to waste. Yeah. And I learned that the hard way. Same, right? same excuse too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. It's like, no, you have to eat it. So, so growing up, obviously with that mentality, but the good thing about me is that I was very active. I was into sports. I played uh, sports my whole life and I competed in like CrossFit in my adulthood and and so I was very um, fit and athletic throughout my life and I was able to eat everything I, I wanted but obviously within moderation uh, because you can't like have you know um, carbs and then go you know play a soccer game because you know then you won't be able to run so I was able to maneuver around that until um, when I hit my depression which was like three years ago when I lived in Dubai and I went through this heavy depression for a year. And that's when I gave up on myself and I started to just binge, binge, binge. And I do struggle from binging. That's been my my problem ever since I was younger. Mm -hmm. Like I can binge on food. I don't have control to stop. So that's why I control myself now because I've learned to control myself now because if I don't, I can just literally keep binging on, on anything that, because I love food in general. Yeah. So, so when I went through my depression and I needed to transform my life all over again and learn and learn what foods does to your body. Like you said, like when you eat salad, you feel so good and energized and opposed to like waking up in the morning and having a bagel, like having a bagel that can mess up your energy level okay. opposed to having like, um, uh, you know, a, a green juice or a smoothie or something lighter or an apple, peanut butter, right? Something lighter, fatty has protein. So I had to experiment a little bit with my body to see what works and what doesn't work. Like I grew up again with eating meats. I, I have meat every day, red meat even, every day, every other day. And that's to me is protein because I work out. But had I known that it's actually affecting my body in a bad way, my energy levels, my blood level, all that, then I would have probably stopped it. But I experimented with my life or my body and I stopped red meat for a while. And I could, I could remember it, Rebecca, so well that my energy level was so much better. I felt lighter. I started to actually, you know, like, like lose weight because I wasn't as bloated anymore. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I love red meat. There's no way I can cut red meat out. So I cut it out for a while and it affected me in a positive way. And so now like I treat myself like once a month and I'll have like a steak opposed to having, you know, red meat every other day, like I used to. So so once I started to experiment and started to understand what foods does, does to my body and obviously becoming a certified health coach, learned a lot along, along the way, at the end of all this, what's making me act this way? What's making me cut red meat or calm down on the red meat and, and eat more veggies or more fruits or understanding that I can still have sugar for my broccoli instead of like having sugar from like, um, you know, a piece of chocolate. Like, how did I understand all this? First off, it started from my willpower, from my mindset, is that I wanted to change my life. I didn't want to be depressed. I didn't want to be overweight anymore. And I wanted to do something for myself. I wanted to actually do something different. And I knew it's going to come with sacrifices. Mm -hmm. I knew I had to let go of a lot of things in my life or, or, or the comfortable lifestyle that I was in with eating everything I want. So that mindset came 100% mindset, like you said earlier. And then 80% was my food and my nutrition, what I insert into my mouth that affects my health and my, my physical part. And then the 20% was movement. And I also experimented because, you know, I was an athlete. I experimented with actually losing weight, Rebecca, without working out. Yep. Yeah. Just by nutrition itself. And, and yeah. all my like friends around me and my family, they're like, Merv, you look really good. Like, are you working out? I'm like, honestly, for once, I can say I, I'm not working out because I, I used to always be the person that's working out. I was like, oh my God, for three months, I experimented with focusing on my nutrition, 80% nutrition, 20% movement. Maybe I would like, um, you know, stretch or do yoga 
not like all the time, but you know, just movement. Yep. Um, and a hundred percent was my mindset that I wanted to, to, to change my life, to transform my life. And I remember when I did that, I lost 25 pounds just like that. And I even looked better than when I was in my twenties as an athlete. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so for me, just focusing on the nutrition part on the, on the veggies, on the fruits, you can really get yourself, um, you can really get the sugar, the, the, the sugars and the fatty and the proteins from the good quality of, of produces or nutrients rather than the chocolates and the candy and the binging on candy. And so like for me, I, again, I grew up in a mentality of um, if I starve myself, I'll lose weight yeah. or if I don't eat anything, <laughs> I'll lose weight. Or if I don't eat food, but I'll have a bag of chips because it's lighter than mm. I'll lose weight. That was my mentality because I didn't know any better. So I, I recommend, you know, like people to really experiment with their bodies. And I'm sure you have as well. Um, so that's been my story with like losing weight and just focusing on nutrition. And and until now, I I swear to God, like when I wake up, I look forward for having breakfast, which is something light and healthy and full of nutrients. Yeah. Because I feel good when I have it. Yeah right? Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's so funny how similar our stories are. That's my dad used to say the same thing. You know, there's people on the other side of the world starving and, and that's not to minimize, you know, the, the, the food crisis that we do have. And that's, that's, you know, another issue. It's unfortunately not going to be solved by you overstuffing yourself because there was, you know, a large spoonful of food put on your plate, but yes, portion sizes are huge. You know, if we can eat smaller amounts throughout the day, that's you know, better. And it's it's interesting how there there is no one size fits all. And that's the challenge is you and I could sit here and tell people what works for us, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for the next person. And our bodies are so complex and so different even at birth. And then all of the experiences that we have throughout our lives change the microbiome and they change the dynamic internally you know your your mindset creates your chemistry and even that mood that you have while you eat is going to affect how you digest that food and so it's it's really really critically important to to um, share that each individual get in touch with their intuition and get in touch with their body because nobody's going to be able to give you the quick fix. And certainly calories in, calories out is always going to count, right? That's always going to matter. If you're eating more than you're burning, that's going to be an issue. But mindset is another huge, huge piece of it, as well as the quality of the food that you're putting in. So fruits and veggies, you know, shop the outer aisles. That's kind of the, the safe uh, recommendation, but it, it doesn't have to be um, a punishment. It's not, for me, I love it. You know, there's so many, especially like you say, with the advent of the internet, there's so many fun recipes out there. There's so many ways to make a potato or to make a zucchini, or it doesn't have to be a salad, right? It, veggies can be used in so many different ways to create so many different things. And dehydrators are really coming uh, back as well. And the, the ways to make breads and chips and things that if you need the crunch, fine, honor that. Just find the right crunch, right? And there's a lot of new brands coming out where they're um, they're they're baking a sweet potato uh, chip and only putting olive oil on it. And that's the only two ingredients are, you know, the sweet potato and the olive oil and I think salt. Um, and that's amazing. That's fine. That's great. So there's always ways to satisfy the craving. You should never have to be in a place of deprivation. Like you say, starving yourself. It, it comes partially from a lack mindset, right? Even what our dad said, like, if you don't eat all this, you're going to starve, essentially, was the message. And <laughs> and <laughs> that's a lack mentality. So we have to be careful with that. Um, but, you know, beating yourself up, forcing yourself to run 5, 8, 10, 12, 21.2 miles, which I've done, um, you know, that's, that's coming from that place of, you know, punish yourself, right? Like run, it's run, run. Hard. All right. Those carbs that he just ate. Right. And so then you're coming back with this this mindset of, okay, I've earned this one meal and I get to eat after I, I run, but then now I'm still gonna feel guilty about everything else after that. And 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 um a woman I love, Dr. Carolyn Leaf, she primarily talks about mindset, but she also covers the um the the medical 
science and proof behind what happens when you eat if you're angry or when you eat if you're depressed or if you eat when you're sad and how the body will store that um, and and you're creating that cortisol and and um, telling the body essentially you're in fight or flight and so that there there is a lack and so that you must store right so all of these different pieces um, are are obviously very um, dynamic and specific to the individual so it's it's important to have the right mindset, choose the right food, and love on your body and listen to your intuition. So, I love that. I love that. And I and I think what I would I would love for our viewers to go to 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 come out with something at least from this video, right? Is um, like like Rebecca said, what's worked for us might not work for you guys. But the one thing that I I would probably say with which has worked for me and my clients that I coach is is finding your why, finding your why on why, why you wanna lose weight, why you wanna uh, feel good, why you wanna stop your, like what, you, what you're doing and do something different, why you wanna change your life, why you wanna transform your life. So find your why and how you find your why obviously is, is by sitting in your shit basically and writing down a lot of a lot of things on like your purpose and life purpose and, and there are so many exercises to that and obviously i coach on that and rebecca coaches on that as well but like finding your why on why are we doing the things that we're doing why are we why have we been doing the things that we have been doing and once you once you really reflect on on the why and why you're doing the things that you're doing and knowing and being mindful about obviously what you've been doing for 20 years is not has not worked out and just realizing that and being ready to get vulnerable and hear that hear something uncomfortable or be ready to do something you've never tried before because that's that's our problem as humans is that we just love to stay comfortable we're scared to try something new because we don't know how it's going to go we're afraid how we're going to feel who we're going to lose along the way and how we're going to do so we love to stay comfortable and and that was me again i just was in my comfort zone for many years i was like no this is how my parents taught me to be and to eat and this is what i know i'm not going to change it and so when i went through these hardships i had to go and dig deep and know why i need to do this why do i need to lose weight is it because I want to attract a partner or is it because I want to look good in a bikini or is it because I want to get into my jeans or is it because I want to feel good about myself and do it for myself? Mm -hmm. So that can go a long way with questioning yourself with that. And then once you're ready or once you know your why and you're ready to actually, un and this is tough to do as an adult because I've been through it, to, to unlearn, unlearn everything you were doing yeah. and you thought you were doing it right because your family taught you and again nothing against family or parents they did everything possible to make us you know the best kids so in their world they were the best parents and they are the best parents but everything they taught you as a as a child until now again it goes into the programming of our minds everything you were taught as a child until now that you're taking with you has not been working out so let's go ahead and unlearn all of that mm -hmm. with the respect for the family. You know, you love your parents and your family, but yeah. let's unlearn all of that because it, it, it has not been working for you. And, and that's what I had to do. And it's very difficult because your mind has been programmed for many years, let's say 30 years, 40 years, 50 years if you're older. And so going to unlearn and then learn all over again and welcome the new even if you're experimenting, even if it's uncomfortable, and it's gonna be uncomfortable, it's gonna be like a, like a new language for you. And once you start to learn the new, like how do, how do I eat healthier? How do I cut carbs? How do I minimize on sweets? How do I fix my energy levels? Why do I have a headache all the time? Yeah. So once you start to welcome the new and see how you can experiment on your body, believe me, you're gonna be just a, a new person. You're going to be a new person because that's what happened to me. And I thought I was healthy. And, and, and the more, the more I thought I knew things, the more I really didn't. <laughs> exactly. Right? Because it's like, there's always a new way. There's always a, another way. And, and the way, if, if you're a woman out there or a man actually, but mainly, mainly a woman, our bodies change 
all the time and our hormones change all the time so the way the way you lost weight in your 20s is not like the 30s it's not like the 40s it's not like the 50s and that's part of life yeah so that's fine and it's okay and you have to accept it and that's how you have to learn how to how to work with your body and what certain foods works for your body or not and i know a lot of my clients like sometimes they have allergies that that uh, are incorporated in their in their bodies at a later age like maybe in their 40s or maybe wow. in their late 30s oh, all of a sudden i have i'm like i'm allergic from chocolate or i'm allergic from bread that's and i'm funny. like i'm like that's interesting because that's how the body works right mm. so that's been that's been my story or or a takeaway from this video for you know the people that are viewing what's what's your takeaway rebecca on for someone that's listening. Oh gosh, um, I don't know about takeaway. Let me ponder that for a minute. I wanted to just second your your point on the why because that is so critically important, and and we uh, we really have to be meticulous about digging deep on our why. And I I like to recommend um, to my viewers the the five whys exercise to ask why not just once but five times. So if you know if you're you're saying I want to run to be fit, well why do you want to be fit? Because I feel unfit. Well why do you feel unfit? Because I used to wear three sizes smaller. Well why did you used to wear three sizes smaller? Right? We're we're getting deeper. There's there's a lot underlying that. And sometimes we say I want to go for a run to be fit and at the end of the day it ends up because I don't like myself. That's why I go for a run. And so then the body knows that it doesn't need the conscious mind to be aware because the body really understands the true intention. And so then you're in resistance, right? You're, you're fighting your body and you don't want to be at odds with your body. You want to be in, in union, in, in, in a relationship together and working as a team, right? So everything needs to be functioning and synergizing. And that, that why is so incredibly important. And I, I would venture to say that if it's anything outside of loving my body and wanting to make my body stronger or to be the best that I can be, it's likely a negative intention and, and therefore will not lead the results, lead to the results that you're looking for. So um, we've got to find ways to, to love and accept ourselves as we are and do things for the right reasons, because that's the only time we're ever going to get to the goals that we're trying to achieve. So. The body hears, the body knows, they, the body hears you. And in fact, the body is, is the first to know, you know, the, the mind is often the last to know. And another thing you said, we're not designed to, to change. Our brains are designed to keep us safe, which is familiar. And our brains are not designed to make us happy, which leads to change, right? So that's where we have to be aware that the mind is not always our friend. And it's, it's, um, what do they say um the 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 tail wagging the dog right like we are supposed to be managing our our mind managing our brain and using it as a tool right it is there to serve us it is not intended to run our lives and that's you know partially how our society has um has taught us in the past and now we're we're starting to learn and come back around and, and shift our mindset so so yeah you said so many good things I couldn't keep up. I needed to take notes. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, and, and deprivation. You know, there's, there's um, so if we're doing this for the right reason, we're saying, I want to do this because I love myself, because I want to get stronger, then every uh, change we try to make, we should approach from a fun and loving place, right? Mm -hmm. If I need to eat less carbs, right, maybe that's less crackers and bread, but I can still have zucchini or potatoes or um, you know the, the things that are growing right the natural carbohydrates grapes um, w one thing that's actually working for me right now is carb cycling and that's relatively new for me um, in my my juice fasting and my fruitarian days I very much learned that we need glucose right even the the, the FDA website will will tell you we need we run off of glucose right so if you're constantly in a state of deprivation which you would be if you're always eliminating all carbs then you're going to be fighting against your body and you're going to feel that constant push or desire to to eat something you shouldn't but if you give yourself say every third day a carb day then you can have grapes and oranges and bananas and 
um, sweet potatoes and squash and and I love squash soup, right? So like feed yourself the healthy carbs, find ways to to nourish that desire and then go back to, you know, on the off carb days, a healthy fat instead of a carbohydrate. And so then I have avocados and nuts and seeds and and just that cycling back and forth, it kind of keeps the body out of um, the familiar so that it has to kind of sh- keep shifting into how you burn calories. And that's that's worked very well for me. And I don't feel deprived. You know, that, that place of deprivation where you feel like you're just pushing against everything you desire is not sustainable. You will crash. And unfortunately, that's horrible for the mindset because then you'll feel like I failed and I, you know, why do I even try anymore? And so we need to set ourselves up for success, not just nutritionally, but from a mindset perspective as well, and make sure that it's um, sustainable. You know, if you if you like chocolate, you can have, you know, uh, cacao powder in your shake. You can have, I absolutely love uh, cherry banana chocolate shake for breakfast. It's amazing. It's awesome, <laughs> right? It's lunchtime for me too. Intermittent fasting is another good one. <laughs> it's lunchtime. So, um, yeah, just find ways to naturally and healthily, um, I think that's a word, healthily, oh, yeah, <laughs> Health, yeah. healthfully um, to, to nourish and satisfy those cravings because they're there for a reason. Your body does need something. It's just if we push it too far, you're going to crash and grab the, the chips because that's the first thing available instead of making a plan and, and allowing yourself the grapes and the bananas and whatever else you need to, to satisfy it before it gets to a breaking point. So. I, I love I love that that last thing that you said and and you're right nutrition or the way we eat has has or it needs to become a lifestyle so then because I get clients that are like okay Merv I'm ready to do this and let's do it and they're full on in you know for like a month and then five weeks and then you know they're 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 about to like go down into that rabbit hole into their old habits into their comfort zone and then that's when i'm like no 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 no, no. come on we got to get back on track so make sure that you're not only doing this temporarily Mm -hmm. like it's not another you know keto diet or starvation diet this is not what we're coaching on this is not what we're here to help you with we're here to help you in changing your lifestyle in transfer transforming your lifestyle getting rid of the old and welcoming the new so this is like a mind body soul um transformation and that's what i wanted to emphasize on because this is a lifestyle that you're doing so instead of like binging on sugar or carbs or whatever how about we start to binge on veggies or anything else and 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 again it, 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 it took me a while to understand how I can go from not from starving myself, starving myself and then eating sugar or carbs and feeling okay, alive again, or that slice of pizza. And I'm good because, you know, I'm trying to lose weight here. Like I'm not going to eat anything all day, but then I'll have a pizza and I'm good. That's so wrong. That yeah. is so wrong. Yeah. Little did I know into, into transforming yeah. my nutrition and my life into being able to eat five meals. Yes. Five meals. And when I say five meals, there are snacks in between, and again, they're portion, um, you know, bowl. Lose wanted to make sure you know clear as well. For some reason, it's cutting out. Am I losing you? Yeah. So, Wait, did you hear everything I said or I lost you? Um, I heard five meals. I'm wondering why it's having a hard time. Let's try it now. Okay, I can hear. Is that okay now? now? Yeah, I think okay. it came back. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. maybe um, say what you were saying about you have five meals a day. Yeah. So I learned, I learned how to have five meals a day and still be able to lose weight and feel good about myself. So it's not about how much, you know, you don't eat or how much you eat throughout the day, as much as how much of a lifestyle change you have. And then the consistency of, of keeping that body going, 
right? Because it's like, think about it. It's like a car. Our bodies are like a car. Um, if you don't, you know, take care of the car, maintenance and, and gas and uh, change the tires and give it a wash, uh, clean it or give it a wash, then the car is going to fall apart. Right. It's going to fall apart. The same as the body. With the wear and tear, the body is going to fall apart if you're not giving the body the right nutrients, right? So what we do is we go from the inside out, opposed from the outside in. So we work from the inside and then as you fix or you work on the inside, it's going to show on the outside. Your skin is going to clear. Um, you're not going to age as fast anymore because you're not putting all that junk into, into your body. Um, you're going to, you're going to really start to feel the energy levels and, and even the, um, even your, your blood pressure, your blood sugar, like all, all this stuff that, you know, we take medication for that's all going to be balanced yeah. once to work from the inside out. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible what happens to your blood sugar when you have say a bread or a cracker or some kind of processed food The the spike in insulin and, and how that triggers the body to store fat. And it also makes you more hungry. So you've totally messed with your, your body's regulating system where you think you're hungry for more crackers, but you're actually not. It's because of what you already ate that's causing that. And then your body's going to store the fat because of the insulin spike. Yeah. So it's it's amazing, and, and people are finally start, starting to talk more about it, the connection between how we feel and what we eat mm -hmm. and how delicate our microbiome is. And when we put, say, a cracker or a processed food in our body, um, how that actually damages and kills the healthy bacteria, and that can cause anxiety, where people who have depression have been able to heal their depression or their anxiety purely through diet where when the healthy oh, are you losing can, is that um, your your voice is still going but your picture froze oh okay. I can still... hopefully yeah now you're back okay <laughs> yeah it's just incredible how uh, the microbiome is so sensitive and that when we put the wrong foods in it we will feel it and, and people often feel like, oh, I'm tired because I ate a, a big meal. It's just normal. It's actually not normal that we shouldn't feel exhausted after we eat our food. And if you start to notice which foods make you feel tired, you'll have a, a real clue into what your body doesn't care for or what you may need to eat in smaller portions. But I can eat two, three, four cups of grapes and never feel tired. It's not, it's not heavy. It doesn't require all of my body's energy to go rush and take care of that. But if I were to eat a cheeseburger, God forbid, <laughs> I would feel sick. I would have to take a nap. I'd have to lay down. Even my kids, you know, they're, they're still young enough that their microbiome is still pretty healthy. And I try to make sure that they eat all the right things when I'm in control. Um, and, and, and they will, they'll say like, oh, I feel so tired, you know, and they're, you know, four and six, these kids have tremendous amounts of energy, way more than I ever could. Um, and it's it's the food that will slow you down. So just start to notice when you feel really, really tired and what you ate, and that'll start to kind of fill in the puzzle for you as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and it's uh, it's so interesting with when it comes to eating, eating crappy food, you feeling crappy, opposed to eating healthy food, and then you're feeling healthy and good. And yeah. it's really, it's really, you are what you eat at the end of the day. Yeah. You're going to binge on junk food and alcohol all day cool. and you know, go a happy hour, you know, after work every day. I don't miss those days at all. No. Uh, they were fun while well, they lasted, but I yeah. don't miss those days at all because I used to feel like shit yeah. you know, after, and I was, I just thought this is part of my lifestyle. Yeah. Like supposed to feel that way because i'm 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 living that way opposed to where i am now and how how food is so like related to my everyday lifestyle mm -hmm. and i plan accordingly because i want to feel good all the time and it's funny because a lot of my my followers or my friends are like merv you always have motivation you're always positive like how do you do it i'm like i'm not perfect i'm still a human i still have my moments and i still have my days but nutrition and how I start my day, how you do one thing is how you do everything is so important to my lifestyle that that keeps my vibrations 
up high on moving forward instead of going back to the old. Yeah. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. It's 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 really interesting how when you you get clean enough that you are in a place where you're, you know, 90, 95% of the time we're we're happy, we're healthy, we're doing good, we have the energy we need. Yeah, there's going to be some days here and there, but it is a majority that we feel good and a minority that we don't feel good. And when you get to that clean place, you notice, right? Like I bought a kombucha the other day and I was drinking it and all of a sudden I started to feel like really antsy and I couldn't sit still and I was like I, I feel like I have anxiety and I looked at the label on the kombucha and there was a fake sugar in there it was like a false sweetener and I had never I, I haven't had false sweeteners for years and I never realized how um, how strong that impact was how impactful it was on my body how quickly I instantly went from like having a great day to like, whoa, I don't feel happy or comfortable in my skin. And it was, you know, that much of the can. And it was, yeah, it's just incredible. And, and I certainly enjoyed my glass of wine for many, many years, probably too many glasses of wine, you know, and <laughs> I did not want to quit. And it, it was something where I had to use willpower and I had to have discipline and I had to love myself enough self-love is not always bubble baths and nail polish right like sometimes yeah. self-love is i am not going to buy that wine anymore and you know there was discipline involved in the beginning but now i'm in such a good place that i would not dare put any toxin in my body like i'm i don't want it i don't need it i love myself enough to not i don't want to feel bad you know why would i there's just no no lure anymore um, so when you start to get clean, you start to, to feel more and more of what's going to um, impact you negatively. And then it's just so much easier to say, I, I don't really want it. I don't want to do that to myself. I don't want to feel crappy. So enough with the hangover days. I'm done. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and again, for the viewers that are listening, this, is, this did not come handy for Rebecca and I. Like we had to go through the worst to, to love ourselves and to appreciate that you know we have a you ha we have a healthy body to to kind of like take care of it and it all came from our why and i'm sure you know rebecca has been through the same is when you go through your why like like you said and i love what you said on the five whys keep asking why and why and why until you dig deeper it might come off as a little bit annoying that you're asking so many questions why are you asking so many questions because again the mind wants to stay comfortable they don't want to feel vulnerable. Yeah. So once you start to ask the whys and really find out if you really care enough about yourself or your kids even to take care of yourself. Because again, a lot of my clients also come to me and they're like, which are olders or like older people or like maybe grandparents. Oh, I want to feel good. I want to take care of myself now for my grandkids. Mm -hmm. So whenever you feel called to, 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 to take that leap of faith and take care of yourself, everything else will fall into place and then yeah. you're just gonna learn how to um how to live a healthier lifestyle yeah. so yes i love i love this and thank you rebecca so much for sharing your experience on this yeah and this is a topic that we can probably write books and talk about for days yeah yeah there was a couple other things i wanted to share that came to mind when you were you were saying that is um some of the older generations i think have have been under the impression that um, genetics are, are something outside of our control and that you may be predispositioned to be overweight or you may be big boned and that's just this curse that you have to live with right. and <laughs> it's not true it's actually not true that our bodies are not designed to be overweight that if we feed it healthy food you know raw as often as possible but certainly just beautiful vegetables and fruits and any combination that you can come up with on a majority of the basis if you eat healthy the majority of the time you are not um, cursed to be big boned or overweight for the rest of your life that your body naturally wants to release um, the excess weight and fat typically fat is there to to pull toxins away from your your vital organs so the fat 
absorbs the toxins and the more it has to absorb the the greater space that it needs to make between the toxin and your vital organs the more fat you will gain and so if you just keep eating negative food things that the body can't process and it needs to deal with in some way you're going to keep packing on the weight so as you detoxify and as you eat healthy foods you're going to start to release that that uh, excess fat but also inflammation you mentioned this earlier too and i wanted to touch on that um, I can I can tell my fingers will swell if I eat something that um, my body didn't like or if it's too much salt or something like that. So wow. inflammation, especially in the face, in the joints, in the ankles, when we get arthritis, arthritis or things that I mean, I, I think 99% of illnesses and disease are caused by inflammation. And so it's not always food. Certainly there's environmental toxins that we're dealing with as well. But as we start to release all of these unnatural things from our body we start to purify our body we will release not only the fat but as well the um the inflammation and and we said you know shop the outer aisles that's always the easy way to say it but there's going to be times you got to go in the the inner aisles right so read the labels that's the other really really critical piece is try to understand all of those ingredients and if you don't know what they are don't buy it because that is not real food it is not something your body is designed to handle and that's that's going to be your safest bet and um i would love to hear your your daily routine i'll share mine real quick but um i'm, I'm a big fan of the medical medium um, he talks a lot about detoxing yeah. and and natural yeah. foods and um, he mentioned that if we can at least wait until noon to have fat, we lengthen the time that our body naturally is in a detoxing mode. So while we sleep and then early into the morning hours, and then if we can extend it to lunch, we can continue to detox that entire time. So if you can have a low to no fat breakfast, mm -hmm. you can extend your detoxing time. So I love shakes for breakfast. You know, like I said, cherries, chocolate, a protein powder, um, and bananas, and that's amazing. Um, I love to intermittent fast is actually kind of what I'm doing right now. So I'll intermittent fast up until noon and then have a salad um, and then just focus on whether or not it's a carb day or a, a high fat day um, and have two or three meals after that. So um, it's actually a myth that your metabolism slows down um, when you don't um, uh, eat and well that's not necessarily true if you're constantly starving yourself it will slow down but if you're only intermittent fasting say until noon um, you're not uh, harming your metabolism and you're actually giving your your body more time to cleanse purify and release so um, I would say those are some of my tips and tricks I love that yeah that's that's actually um, it, it's interesting uh, and it's funny because I do I've tried intermittent fasting before and I and I think I want to experiment on it as well because of, of the many experiments that I've done. Mm -hmm. But thank you for sharing that. That's very informative. Um, so for me, yes, for me would be, um, all right. So for me, I'm, I'm a firm believer on, on eating uh, at least every two to three hours because I grew up with, you know, slow metabolism, you're gaining weight because you're not genetics, because mm -hmm. you're thick boned and all that BS that, you know, uh, <laughs> you're throughout your years. So I was like, no, I'm going to prove my body wrong here and do this on my own. Yes. So I was able to obviously follow this and uh, among, among with any other stuff. And it's worked on my body. And then I was like, look, family, look, friends. I'm not thick boned. I'm not genetically, you know, meant to stay like big and fat and all of that. Right. So for me, as soon as I wake up, I must have a glass of um, warm water. Yes, lemon that, water. To that I got used to that and if you don't like the taste of water which I know many people that don't like the taste of water which blows my mind but you can always put lemon or ginger or whatever you need to do um, in order for you to drink it so I break my fast because what's a break fast it's breaking the fast because you're sleeping all like sleeping for seven eight nine hours and your body's dehydrated so the first thing we need to put in our body not coffee caffeine mm -hmm. right we need put water because it's dehydrated so I chug that water and I look forward to it because I love water and then 30 minutes later I go ahead and I have a black coffee and again my old self was light and sweet with cream yep now black all the way and I love it and I love the taste of it so black coffee works for me and then an hour after that 
I go and I have a small breakfast. And again, I used to come from like a full on breakfast, like eggs and pancakes and um, bacon and, and bread and bagels to having like an apple, peanut butter. That's my breakfast. Yeah. And I'm sure people are like, what? That's not going to fill me up. Trust me. It yeah. will fill you up because it's going to give you the nutrients that the body needs to continue moving forward. The energy, your energy levels are just going to like, like go through the roof here. So I will have like an apple and peanut butter. And then an hour to two hours later, I'll have a snack. What's a snack? It's not a piece of chocolate. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bag of chips. <laughs> a snack can be celery. It can be a vegetable. It can be another fruit that's not high in sugar. So like maybe not watermelon yet, if you're trying to lose weight, but more of like um, have um, um, a piece of, uh, you know, a peach or a pear um, or an orange even, yeah. right? Yeah, so go, go through a snack that way or even a veggie, a broccoli, like a cup of broccoli or celery, something again, that's gonna give you the nutrients. And then an hour or two later, I'll have lunch. And what's lunch? Again, it's not carbs for me. Because let's say I'm someone that doesn't work out. I'm not going to have, have carbs because I'm not burning it. So I can actually fill my body with protein and veggies. And I'm actually full. I'm satisfied. I don't need to stuff my face with like a lot of food, right? So I'm satisfied because I know in two hours I'm going to have a snack. So I'll have another snack. Celery, broccoli, you know, just throwing things out there. And then after that, I'll have dinner. And again, dinner consists of a protein and veggie if I'm not working out. If I'm someone that's working out constantly and burning calories, then I'll incorporate uh, carbs. It can be rice, it can be quinoa, it can be um, a small, you know, uh, half, half a cup of pasta. But yeah. yeah, but that has worked so well for me. And I'm having a lot of food throughout the day. So that's another thing in our, with our mentality is that let me have a heavy breakfast because I'm not going to eat for four hours, right? Or let me have a heavy lunch because I'm not going to have dinner the rest of the day. And that's wrong. Yeah. That's wrong for the body. Again, think of the body like a car. The body needs fuel. The car needs fuel. It's not going to drive six hours without you putting fuel in it. Same as the body. In order for you to consistently build your metabolism and energy levels, you need to continue fueling, right? And yeah, and experiment with their body. So that's been definitely working for me. Yeah, and there's a mindset piece in there too. When you mentioned like, oh, the apple won't fill me up. That's your belief. That's yeah. not your stomach. That's your mind saying, I need more. But really, if you eat the apple and the peanut butter and you wait 20 minutes and check back in and see, are you hungry? You're not going to be hungry. I love that. Yes. Had enough. And so we've, when we have the giant breakfast, we've stretched our stomach out and then we have a false hunger that comes two, three hours later anyways, because the body needs to continue to put some more in after two, three hours. So you've already just had too much. So you, you're kind of, um, <laughs> at a deficit for the rest of the day, calorie wise. So yeah, I, I'm not a big calorie counter. I'll throw that in there. Um, I'm a ballpark calorie calorie count calorie counter you know i kind of want to know generally where i'm at but i don't think that we should watch it to the calorie because that again creates more mindset issues so yeah yeah you're you're right you're absolutely right yeah. and um yeah i mean this is this is really again like we can go on for days talking about this but yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is our, our experiences for rebecca and i and i hope you guys you know are gonna benefit from this video or at least come out with one thing and take action i mean that's my takeaway Take action, get uncomfortable, do something crazy and different. And when I say crazy and different, something like, like eating an apple for breakfast that you've never, ever tried before. Exactly. You're like a veggie fruit hater and you know, you, you hate this stuff. Try something new, yeah. eat an apple, even if you don't like it, eat and see how you feel. Experiment with your body, take action. Yeah, make a plan. Don't make a, make a plan. Don't get to the point where you're hungry, you know, know what you're going to do throughout the day so that you're not in a place where you break. So thank you, Merv, so much. I really, really love chatting with you and we could talk food and nutrition all day, obviously. So I would love to hear from our viewers. Do you do you try any of these right now? What works for you? Share with the community. Know that by sharing, you're helping. And so 
sharing is caring. <laughs> yeah, sharing is caring. Please share. The more you share, the more we're going to put content out there that's related to this. And yeah. please don't forget to subscribe for both channels as well, up yeah. there or down there, whatever they are. Yes. Yes. And I think over here. <laughs> um, and then there'll be links. Yeah, we'll put links in the, the, the comments or the description box for anybody who wants to reach out to Merv and I for coaching on this as well. So, all, all right. right. Thank you, Merv. Bye. 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 Take care. <laughs>